I'm Professor Jeff Pilkington, Professor of Cellular and Molecular Neuro-Oncology at the University of Portsmouth. We're here outside the St Michael's building of the University, which houses the School of Pharmacy and Biomedical Sciences. And it also houses my Brain Tumor Research Laboratories, which is one of the first dedicated brain tumor laboratories in the United Kingdom. I'm now standing in a small tissue culture laboratory where we actually grow brain tumor cells. Initially, we take receipt of biopsy tissue, which comes from one of our collaborating uh, neurosurgical centers from a consultant neurosurgeon. These are posted directly to us, and we'll have two tubes in here, one which will contain blood and one which will contain uh, brain tumor from the patient. These are then set up in the laboratory here. We grow them in little flasks, and here's one of the flasks. This is held within an incubator. The incubator here um, has a sp specific temperature, pH and humidity which mirrors what happens in the brain. So the cells are growing in this pink fluid. The pink fluid will change colour as the cells grow and this will become gradually yellow and that gives us an indication that we have a successful culture. These cells can also be examin examined under uh, microscopes. So this will go back into the, into the uh, incubator here. This is actually a low oxygen incubator. This enables us to grow cells from the very centre of the tumour where there's a, a reduction in the amount of oxygen available to the cells. Cells that do very well there are, th are things called cancer stem cells. And these cells are uniquely resistant to pretty much any drug or therapy that we can give to the cells. So we're very interested in separating those particular cancer stem cells out and concentrating some of our research issues on how we can make those cells more sensitive to existing and indeed novel therapies. So I'll now move in, uh, into the, uh, the next laboratory where we can store cells. This is a large flask which contains a substance known as liquid nitrogen, which enables us to freeze cells for long periods of time. So once we've got cells from a brain tumour biopsy growing in the laboratory, we're then able to put this into very small tubes and freeze it in liquid nitrogen. We can then store the cells for long periods of time and we can then take those cells out at any given time, regrow them in the laboratory and therefore get data from experiments from brain tumour patients um, for many, many years. So these cells, make, many of them go back 20 or 30 years. In this area of the laboratory we're investigating how various drugs can interact with different targets on cells. Here we're looking at the ability of cells to uh, respond to drugs which are hitting the nucleus, the control centre of the cells. On this side we're more interested in little rugby ball like structures which are embedded in the cell called the mitochondria. These uh, create the energy for the cell. And both of those provide valid targets through which we can selectively kill cancer cells. So moving on to the, uh, the rest of the laboratory here. This is a high resolution microscope which is powered by lasers and it gives fluorescence images, coloured images, in this case of brain tumour cells. What we can see here are two cells on the screen there. The, the blue uh, centres are the nuclei, the control centres. The little red dots and the little green dots represent different molecules on the cell surface. These work very cooperatively together in how cells, determining how cells, move into the brain. So it's the underlying mechanism involved in how brain tumour cells can gain entry to, to various regions of the brain. Here we have a microscope which has a, an incubator um, built around it. This enables us to grow cells and keep them under the, the appropriate conditions over long periods of time, mainly three days, that sort of period of time. And we're able to take pictures of the, these cells at 10 minute intervals. So what happens is the microscope will go around, take a picture, one well, and then move on and on and on progressively for three days. And then we can, we can find out about a number of different events. We can work out the speed of movement of cells. We can work out how far a cell travels before it undergoes cell division. We can also examine what happens to the two daughter cells after that division. Do they continue in the same uh, direction or do they go off in different directions? And we can also look at the effects of drugs. 
How do these cells die? By what mechanism do the cells die? Or do the cells develop and throw out additional processes? All sorts of really dynamic events can be monitored in different treatment regimens. And this gives us lots of information about how perhaps we can stop brain tumour cells from spreading into uh, the normal brain tissue which surrounds the, the tumour itself. This is a microscope, although it doesn't look very much like a microscope, in that large black box is contained a very high resolution, uh, high magnification instrument. What this enables us to do is to take pieces of brain tumour tissue, to insert those in, into the microscope, and then it employs lasers to cut around individual cells. So here we can see a piece of breast tissue, and it's possible to focus the laser beam, and we have a, a, an ultraviolet laser and an infrared laser in this particular instrument, to focus them on a particular cell, draw around it, and then cut that particular cell out. We can do this by looking at different parts of the brain tumour. So, for example, we could look at the main core of the brain tumour, where there are lots of tumour cells, and then we could move the, the microscope onto an area where brain tumour cells are diffusely infiltrating into the normal brain, and we can cut around those we can flick those cells out into individual pots like this, so we could have an invading cell in this pot, and we could have a cell from the, the main focus of the tumour in that. We can then take them away and genetically analyse these, looking at a panel of perhaps a hundred different genes to see which genes are expressed by the invading cells and which genes are expressed by the non-invading cells, and work out which genes control that invasive behaviour. This is very important for brain tumours, because if we can stop tumour cells from moving, we can then treat the disease more as a local disease, and this will give better chance for uh, improved results.